Hey everybody, Dungeon Master, back with another video. Uh, episode 18? Episode 19. I don't remember. Fuck it. Hey everybody, welcome back. Dungeon Master, here with another video. Everybody, welcome back. Dungeon Master... Hey everybody, Dungeon Master here. Welcome back to another video. Uh, this week, short one. Short but sweet. It's not short. Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Dungeon Master here. Uh, we've spent the last month or so on big builds, so I'm going to take a break this week and do something smaller. Uh, I decided to take some of my balsa wood and throw together this nice thing, a gallows, for use on your tabletop for your miniature delight. So please stick around and watch the following video. Roll that beautiful bean footage. So hopping right in here, we got a, a quarter inch uh, piece of uh, balsa dowel that I'm gonna cut into four inch sections. I'm gonna cut two pieces exactly four inches and then um, another two pieces three and a half inches. And this is because I wanna make the two pieces on the sides sit flush with the sides, with the top and the bottom or the front and the back so that when it goes together it forms an exact uh, four inch square and this you know it's is more or less precise it's not exact so I mean use your best judgment and definitely just you know use your eyeballs I mean you can tell if it's not even and if it doesn't look the right size shrink it up you know make it three by three instead and it'll work just fine once I've got the pieces cut I uh, you know, trim the top and bottom and then cut off the, uh, the excess, the leftovers with my hobby knife. And a hobby knife is strong enough to just push through this, but be careful with the dowel. The dowel's a little too thick to just push through. Um, use a, like a slicing motion. Push through, uh, push the knife forward and slide it down and push down on it while you're pushing the knife forward and then you'll make a nice clean cut. But don't try to cut all the way through either. It, it's kind of hard to explain. Um, you don't want to do a sawing motion because that'll dull your knife. But you definitely want to push it into the cut while applying downward pressure. And then rotate the piece as you're doing it to work your way around it. And you should get a nice square cut like you can see here. And then I'm just attaching all of the pieces using some liquid uh, CA glue. In a previous video, I made this balsa chopper, and these little strips of wood uh, are basically um, exactly what this thing was made for, for me, um, to chop up these, uh, I want to say there are 3 8 uh, inch pieces of balsa, maybe by 2 16 they're pretty thin anyway, they're about the size, uh, a scale size for a plank, for like a dollhouse or something, but they're also going to work perfectly for what I need here. Uh, these, again, I cut to roughly four inches, not exactly, give or take an, uh, a millimeter or two. And then uh, when I put them on the frame in a little bit, you'll see how I stagger them. But um, this, this blade made quick, this chopper made quick work of these planks. And again, I'm just, uh, with the CA glue, there's another reason why this project was so quick to make was the fact that uh, CA glue and balsa are just, I feel like they're meant to be together. They just they hold up almost instantly and very strongly. Um, although balsa is a fairly weak wood, so keep that in mind. You see I'm not putting the planks on perfectly straight. I'm kind of putting them on roughshod to, you know, give the effect that, they, that this thing was thrown together hastily. You know, there's a hanging in town. Let's, let's, let's build a gallows real quick. And, Usually gallows were constructed quickly and to uh, facilitate a quick uh, speedy death and then oftentimes either you know, left up for the sake of enforcing a law or for uh, they were torn down quickly to you know, move on with life. I'm 
gonna use the same uh, quarter inch dowel and make um, one uh, one inch legs for the corners. And this is gonna be the to elevate the platform. Kind of, I'm gluing it on three sides here. I'm gluing it on the, the two corners, uh, the two or the two flat sides where they meet the two sides of the, um, the frame, and the end where it's going to butt up against the flooring on the top. And that that formed an insanely solid bond. These things, this is not going anywhere. It weighs nothing too. I mean, this thing is so light. And now we're going to embellish the base a little bit, because I mean it would look kind of corny if it didn't have any wood in between. So I'm going to take some more of my planking and uh, cut it to be exactly the distance between two of the legs and place the board kind of cockeyed in between, again, to give the appearance that this thing was hastily constructed. I think it looks cooler if it doesn't look perfect. I'm just uh, scoring the boards with my knife. You can't really see it here, but um, I'm scoring the boards with a knife to find my measurements and then going back and cutting them up after. Pop some CA glue on each end and then just stick it into the, the space in between the two legs. And apply a little pressure and it'll hold and then go back and do the same thing. And here on the other corners, the front and the rear of the, the structure, I'm adding uh, corner braces to make it, you know, to, to add some structural reinforcement to it. Of course, it's not actually doing any structural reinforcement, but it looks like it is. That's important enough. I just guessed at the angle. I mean, I could have measured these all out and been precise and exacting with them, but there's really no need to. And I mean, uh, if you Take your time with this stuff and just do it with your eyes. It's gonna look good enough at this scale. There's nothing that I, I hate more than spending so much time on something and nobody notices it, so I don't even bother. I'm the only one who really notices my, my shit show. And here I've got some pieces of flat uh, balsa. This is the same material that I used in my bookshelf video for the backing of the shelves. It's basically like a 3 sixteenths thick by three inches wide. Um, and it's a good three foot long piece. And I'm just cutting some trapezoid shapes here. Uh, again, using my eyeballs to just kind of figure it out. I made it roughly an inch high. Uh, the sheet that I had cut from was left over from the bookshelves. So they were already uh, two inches in uh, width. I had cut, I actually cut them down from three inches to two inches. So these pieces are each an inch high. Um, if you put them inside my little grid there, you'd see that they're, they're uh, roughly, an inch, well, maybe a little bit bigger than an inch, maybe about an inch and a half. But I ended up cutting them down anyway, so that the, by the time I was done cutting them down, they were definitely an inch. It's a trial and error thing. I just, I cut down a piece, set it up against the side, cut down another piece, set it up against the side, and eventually settled on a method of connecting them to the front here by um, cutting the back piece uh, flush so that it would sit against the back side, uh, or sorry, I sit against the frame, and I eventually added another piece of uh, board to the back of the staircase once I had made it, which you'll see here in a few, and that added a little bit more structural uh, integrity to the whole thing. I made my stairs an inch and a quarter wide, uh, just in case I had a miniature with a little bit bigger of a base that I wanted to set on the stairs. Um, there's really no reason for a miniature to occupy every single stair. So really the mini, the middle stair is, or the first step, is really the only space that a miniature can occupy uh, with the back brace that I put on. But um, it gives, you can say, hey, my miniature's on these stairs and they empty on the stairs. 
it's you can I would in on in gameplay I would probably allow a miniature to just climb right up on there with probably only a very easy DC uh, dexterity check or even athletics check just to hop up there it probably wouldn't even uh, I mean I'm a, a small creature sure a little bit harder but medium or larger just you can hop up sure no problem and then with my stairs there I noticed um, uh, I glue them to the frame and the connection was just not strong enough it wasn't there wasn't enough surface area on the frame to connect the stairs to after I measured them so um, you'll see I, I glue them and then I just pull them right back off and attach another piece of wood to the back of the stairs in order to make them stay yeah see there's there's not enough space there plus that one stair is crooked so I took that apart and um, redid it I just pulled it right off the glue wasn't even really set yet here just it came apart I mean the balsa wood's so soft I just pulled it apart straightened out the stair re-glued it um, cut a small uh, cut another small piece of wood glued that to the back of the top portion of the stair here and um, and then attached that to this to the uh, frame and that held very nice <laughs> a small strip uh, to the underside as a bit of reinforcement it's just another piece of balsa um, this is where I'm gonna end up attaching the uh, the actual gallows uh, somewhere in that area uh, just again using the same dowel that I used for the frame um, pretty much all I had left I, I thought I was gonna run out um, I actually had just enough left to make this without having to make a trip to the store which was very nice because I really didn't want to go out it was Sunday I was relaxing from you know my first couple of weeks at work. I finally got it back into my crafting rhythm, and I really didn't want to have to make a trip to the store. So it was nice that I still had enough material left over to do this whole thing without having to uh, go on an expedition. And um, from my uh, reference photo, what I used to do this, I kind of made a slight modification here, and I, I didn't really need to. I put the two braces on the outside and one brace on in the middle. So for the rear of the, the gallows pole, uh, you can see I, I put one on the outside on the back, or two on the outside on the back, and then one on the inside on the front. So here on the back, I'm putting two. I'm putting one on this uh, outside. I'll flip it, cut off the excess, and attach another one um, lined up pretty much exactly with it. And that glue is already set. I mean, it's that quick. Another reason that I. I I'm absolutely, I absolutely adore working with um, balsa wood because it's just so much faster to do it this way. It satisfies my impatience anyway. So I cut that off. Uh, I didn't see, and I didn't really need to do it this way. I could have just put one in the middle in the front and one in the middle in the back or center, I guess, not middle technically. But, um, it looks cool. It really does. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna belabor the the placement of two little pieces of wood when it. it serves its purpose and it looks like it's supposed to look so in here yeah, I just took the same small strip of wood uh, this is uh, leftover bits from the um, again from the bookshelf crafting uh, this, some strips that I trimmed off of the the, the 3 16 by 3 um, flat panel so I never throw anything out that's a that's a decent shape anyway something that I can keep and use and I'm cutting out four, uh, probably three quarter inch pieces with uh, 45 degree angles on them. Again, guessing at the angles, and this is gonna be the feet that uh, support the, uh, the pole on the main platform. And I start by gluing the actual pole down first, and then gluing down the support. So I picked a good spot close to the center. And that was that was a little bit weak so these supports actually do provide some structural integrity to the thing 
and prevent the pole f itself from, you know, just getting knocked right off of the thing. I mean, you put enough pressure on it, it will snap off, but this makes it a lot stronger. Now, what I could have done is I could have cut a hole in the platform and I could have put the gallows pole right through and into the ground, but why? It, it's, it's so much more effort. I'm not going to transport this anywhere. It's probably going to stay in my house for play. It might even just be a display piece. I don't know yet. I haven't incorporate. I've thought. I haven't thought about incorporating it into anything yet. But now that I have it, I'll probably want to use it. I went with a little bit of a lighter brown for the wood on this to try to give it a little bit newer of a wood look. What I should have done, and I'm kicking myself a little bit here. What I should have done is mix in just a little bit of yellow, or even used an umber or a sienna instead of a brown to do the wood on this. It looks okay, but it doesn't look, it still looks a little too old after I'm done with the dry brushing. Like I did it, uh, the same kind of process as I did in my bookshelf video, but just lighter. So it's a, it's a regular brown with a dry brushing of suede, as opposed to a dark brown with a dry brushing of suede, which is my preferred method for old wood. So I'm still looking for a good color for wood, and I think the Sienna or the, the, uh, the umber, or some such, would have uh, worked better. Or the yellow, I'm sorry, not the umber. But I did, uh, I did water this down slightly with some distilled water, which I, I think is better for watering down paints. Um, if you're going to do one something like this, I use my medium in other circumstances, like painting on a solid surface, but uh, the distilled water works perfectly, and it's kind of the old fallback. There's no need for me to waste medium on this. This uh, balsa wood, if you water this stuff, this paint down enough, this balsa wood soaks this stuff up like a sponge. And it takes it takes stain really well, so if you have a stain or an ink you wanna use to, to paint the, the wood with, even better. Um, use that instead and get a much better effect. I did not use a wash on this, There's there was no need to. Um, I didn't exaggerate the grain because the grain is already pretty, um, exposed on balsa there's really no need to to make it to enhance it I mean you can certainly if you want to put that work into it no problem um, but I didn't need the cartoon look for this it just it worked the way it is I didn't have to do anything to the wood except for paint it so this, this uh, was one of those rare gifts that I just got to enjoy building this thing without too much of a hassle and had a lot of fun doing it very simple project. Making sure to hit every um, every inch of this thing with the dry brushing. It looks like good seasoned wood. I, I mean, I'm not going to complain that the piece came out good overall. But it was another uh, you know another experience to learn from. Something that I can do better on next time I paint wood, especially a piece that's going to be outdoors, especially a piece that's made from fresh cut wood, or even um, you know recently cut wood, as opposed to very old wood. Something that's been sitting in a mage's study for years versus something that was just cut down a year ago or even a few months or a few weeks ago. Overall, it does look very good though, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna complain, like I said. Here I just have some craft string and I'm gonna use this to tie my noose. It's a pretty basic knot. Um, you, can, you can find these online, I call it a, it's a, it's a whip knot, it's, I don't call it a whip knot, everybody calls it a whip knot, but I just did some, some whipping here in, you reverse the, the knot on itself to uh, two bites. They call it a bend in the rope, they call it a bite. So you do two bites and you wrap it around, feed it through the top bite and just pull it tight and bam, you have your noose. And I use some, a uh, couple drops of super glue just to hold it tight so that it wouldn't shrink on me. So that, you know, you couldn't pull the noose and lose it and have to retie it and recenter re it on something. So I just, um, I used my miniature, uh, as a, a guideline to you know for how big the noose should be how long the rope should be and uh, like I
like I said, just a little, just a drop or two of CA glue on the knot. Uh, on, we'll actually keep it from moving and uh, keep it looking nice for a long time. And I cut about, um, I want to say about seven or eight inches of string after, and that's I kept, I tied the noose while the string was attached to the uh, spool, so that I could you know, not run out of string and have to tie a piece together in mid, in mid, uh, mid cut, I guess. And then I just, I suspended my miniature from it to give it a little bit of dangle so that, you know, I could actually suspend a miniature from the knot and uh, have the miniature actually hang, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, and then I used a, a drop of super glue to hold it and then I wrapped it around the pole. I, I wrapped it around a few times and had enough left over to, uh, to have it uh, tie around a pin that I'm going to put in the side, which you'll see here in a second. Um, I just I used my uh, pin vise with the smallest bit that I could, which actually, uh, when I put it into the wood, I tried to turn it and push it and drill out the hole to put it halfway through, and the wood was so soft, the pin vise just went straight through the wood. I mean, it didn't break it or anything, which was, you know, thankfully, but... Um, You'll see here, it just goes right in. I didn't have to, barely any pressure. Uh, once I found a spot for it, maybe a good inch and a half up from the butt, from the base, it just it just went right through. It was effortless, which was pretty cool. And I took a, uh, a, a push pin um, and cut uh, probably half of it off and inserted that into the hole. Put a little super glue on it and push that into the hole that the pin vise made. And there's my uh, pin or post to tie my knot off to. So I wrapped it around a couple times, drop a CA glue, and using my tweezers here, after that setup, I using my tweezers, I, you know, lassoed it around, made a coil to make it look like it was hung there. And, oh man, this thing's awesome. I really like how this piece came out. I set out to make something pretty basic and just it just all came together. It was one of those uh, miracle builds that just all worked out. I never, I didn't have any problems with it. it. It really did only take me about two hours, start to finish. Here you go. Here's the finished product, complete with you know a hanging zentarum for those of you who uh, who wish d uh, death upon the black network. And please don't kill me, Zents. You know. Thanks for sticking around, everybody. I appreciate it. Um, like, it's, like I said, this was a short one. Uh, small build, only took me a couple hours to build, start to finish, really easy to do. Um, just a simple frame with a simple stand. It's, it's pretty much the most basic kind of gallows that, that I've seen online. Uh, they get even simpler than that, I'm sure. Um, and all of your execution needs met in a very simple manner. Human beings are efficient at one thing. If they're efficient at anything, it's killing. And uh, this was definitely evidence of that. Um, wow, that was pretty grim. Thank you all for watching. If you like what I'm doing, head on over to Patreon. Consider becoming a subscriber. One dollar a month gets you everything. I don't uh, block my content behind more than one tier. Uh, I don't see the need to. If uh, you want to, if you're in the mood to give more than a dollar, please do. Anything you can, uh, you can swing helps the channel. Um, if if you like to do some shopping on Amazon, uh, I have affiliate links down there in the bottom, in the description below, uh, for your shopping pleasure, so that you can support the channel other ways. If you don't feel like giving, a, you know, a single red cent to this idiot behind the camera, and you want to just go do your shopping. Just do that it's the lazy way and I get a small cut pretty cool um, if you uh, will leave a like <laughs> don't forget the like button subscribe uh, uh, leave a comment below uh, I keep wiping my fucking nose and uh, subscribe if you're not, not I can't do this today <laughs>
Don't forget to hit the like button. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Uh, and ring that little notification bell so that you know when I post new shit. Also, um, if you would like to leave a comment below, uh, tell me what you think. Tell me how I did on this uh, particular video. And if you have any suggestions for future videos or content, let me know. I might take them into advisement. I do run a poll over on my uh, oh, point over there. That's not where my Patreon is. My Patreon is down there in the links below. Uh, I do run a poll over on my Patreon every month of the month and a half. I try to, I'm, I've only done one so far, so I don't know how long it's gonna be till I do another one, probably end of the month. Um, I do run a poll over there on my Patreon to see what I'm gonna build on the channel. So uh, if you're a member over there, you can definitely vote in those polls, contribute to the channel in that way. Thanks to my patrons for this month. Your names are down here, playing on the ticker tape. Uh, one way or the other. I don't know which way it's going. Could be going this way. I don't know. Something over there. Anyway, take care, guys. Thanks for watching. Dungeon Master, out. Peace. Intro.